How do you feel about the strength of your business and the pace of your business growth? Do you have a steady stream of clients coming in or is it ebbing and flowing without consistency? Are you approaching burnout from trying things from multiple coaches without being able to achieve the results you want? Do you want exponential growth without having to invest time and energy on social media? I am here to tell you it's possible to experience that in fourth quarter of 2023 and set your business up for even more growth in 2024. But here's what I see happening. Business owners often hire a coach or mentor only to have to hire several other people to help them in other areas because the coach or mentor doesn't have all the answers. Have you experienced this? Working with a coach only to have to buy additional online courses or schedule strategy calls with other experts? And I'm guessing that most business coaches you've worked with emphasize the need to be on social media. But you don't even like social media and you recognize that it's not the best place to put all your effort. So what happens? You become even more overwhelmed and frustrated. I've met with so many people lately and within five minutes of hearing the description of the purpose to results method, they say they wish they'd known me before they hired their coach. Who, by the way, they paid upwards of 20K to work with. The business growth process doesn't have to be complicated. It breaks my heart to see people struggle unnecessarily. I don't want you to struggle. And that is why I created the Purpose to Results Success Without Social Mastermind, the only one-stop business growth coaching program. And the doors are now open. If you are ready to grow your business with simplicity and without an emphasis on social media, you want to apply today. The Success Without Social Mastermind is the only one-stop coaching program where you will get to experience complete clarity, learn business growth strategies that work and feel good to you, learn systems, processes, tech, and tools, including SEO, to simplify and streamline, get a thorough review of your website, get my brain in your business for idea generation, creativity, strategy, and tech, and as an extra bonus, get featured on The Robin Graham Show. Founding members of the Success Without Social Mastermind will receive special discounts on tuition as well as a lifetime access to our off-social private community. To learn more and apply today, just go to https colon forward slash forward slash successwithoutsocialmastermind.com. The link is in the show notes. You don't want to miss this opportunity. It may sound too good to be true, but I am telling you, it's all inside the Success Without Social Mastermind. Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the go-to podcast for Christian entrepreneurs and business owners who want success without social media. Are you tired of hearing you must be on social media, posting at just the right time, and constantly selling in the DMs to grow a successful business? Are you sick of spending countless hours producing valuable content with little to nothing to show for it? Worse yet, are you fed up with imposter syndrome that inevitably comes from time spent scrolling on social media? No wonder you procrastinate. But I've got great news. There is a better way to grow your business. Hey friends, I'm Robin Graham, a Christian business coach and marketing strategist specializing in growing a successful business without social media. I'm also the author of You, Me, and Anxiety. The Robin Graham Show is a podcast for faith-based business owners and entrepreneurs who want to follow their God-led calling and uncover joy, purpose, and passion in their life and business while having an impact and making money. Each week, I'll teach on how to grow your business without social media, in addition to various topics and strategies that you can employ to do so. Think how-tos like marketing, SEO, personal branding, PR, email marketing, and sales strategies, tech tools, systems, processes, and automation, the behind the scenes stuff you need to simplify, and strategies to recognize and navigate mindset barriers and anxiety. 
I and my guests will give you the best advice to help you create the life and business of your dreams, with a healthy dose of Jesus, of course, so that you can build a solid foundation for your business and create a lifetime of limitless earning potential while fulfilling your purpose and creating a ripple effect of good in the world. If you're tired of overthinking and doing all the things with minimal results, you're in the right place. I'm all about simplicity, ease, and grace while having fun, creating an impact, and making money. Subscribe for new content every week. And be sure to visit therobingraham.com forward slash resources to download free resources to help you grow your business for limitless earning potential. And if you want, email us at the team at therobingraham.com. We open all of our emails and would love to hear from you. Tell us what your struggles are, your challenges, or just say hi. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Solo episode today, and I'm going to talk about how you can use photos to improve SEO strategy. Have you ever wondered how to use photos, aka images, on your website to improve your SEO strategy? Chances are no, but photos can improve SEO when you use them correctly. And I'm going to share how today. You can and should use photos to improve SEO strategy. Don't let SEO scare you. Using images to improve SEO strategy is relatively simple and can make a big difference in the ability of your soulmate clients to find you. I realize SEO may not be sexy, but it is powerful and it can be simplified. I assure you. SEO is the best and easiest way to achieve long-term success and to grow your business without social media. Of course, social media can be great for driving traffic to your website if the right people see your content. And it is also great for building relationships. We've got other episodes that focus more on the value of social media compared to the value of SEO, but the bottom line is every single business owner needs to have an SEO strategy if you want to have long-term success. It's all part of the foundation of your business. So that's why this episode is important today. And I want to emphasize that you'll hear me use the words photos and images interchangeably today. To me, they're for the sake of this content, they're one and the same. So we're just going to go with that. So bear with me if I do use those two words interchangeably. So let's start with what photos to use in your SEO strategy. What photos do you need on your website? Well, you want to start with a professional photo of yourself on your homepage and your about page. People buy personality, not products and services. Let people who come to your site immediately see who you are. Your eyes and smile are the gateway to an emotional connection. Your visual presence is key to building your personal brand. And of course, we know that your personal brand is at the foundation of your business, and that's where all of your marketing efforts are going to begin. Defining your personal brand allows you to then communicate to the world what makes you unique, what differentiates you, and why people should hire you. So also, you want to include images of you working with your clients, behind-the-scenes activities, customized stock photos of your computer, office space, etc. If you don't have photos of your team or of you working with clients, use stock photos. Canva is a great resource for stock photos, and you don't need a pro account to be able to access them and use them. If possible, testimonials featured on your website should include a photo of the person who gave you the testimonial. The testimonial. So where should you use photos on your website? As I mentioned before, you want to be visible on as many pages as possible so that people know immediately who you are. Your header or banner image images are real estate to showcase yourself on every page. Every page of your website should have at least one photo. Your blogs should have a featured image, which will help your website visitors readily identify what the blog is about. Even if only a graphic with the title on it, it just adds value. Every time you write copy, 
for a blog post, think about the keyword or key phrase of your post and use an image that relates to that. And I'll explain why in a minute. Photos are a great way to separate large blocks of copy to make your content more skimmable and to improve readability. Readability influences SEO. So let's dive into the nitty gritty of SEO for images on your website. And I want to refer you to episode 37. I will have it linked in the show notes because I, in that episode, back when the show was still the second phase podcast, I did a detailed overview of images for the website. And you'll find even more details there that I didn't include here for the sake of not wanting to duplicate. But your image setup will be determined by your website platform. So I use WordPress and there's an example on the blog post that you can click over in the link in the show notes to see it. Um, So my content that I'm gonna refer you to or talk about today is specifically related to WordPress. However, every platform, Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, et cetera, will have the same attributes for you to populate for each photo on your website. If you haven't been doing this all along, you may feel overwhelmed or discouraged at the thought of this task, especially if you already have a lot of images on your site. Just focus on doing this going forward and backtrack as time permits. This is not something to get overwhelmed about. It is simply knowledge for you to employ so that you can continue to grow your business. So what attributes should you include on the photos on your website? Many people don't know that the purpose of alt text is to help non-sighted people know what is on a graphic or image. Not only can you add alt text to images on your website, but also on social media platforms and LinkedIn. It's a really nice way to support the non-sighted community. When adding alt text, describe in as much detail as possible what is on the photo or the graphic. Include your keyword or key phrase for that page or post in the alt text. So for example, if you have a photo of a woman or person, um, I'm going to use woman because that's just what most of my graphics seem to have on them because I interview so many women on the show. But let's just use that as an example. So you would say uh, the name of the person and you could say, or if it's you, your name and say, you know, I am wearing a navy blazer with a white V-neck blouse with a gold chain. My hair is long and brown. My eyes are blue. I am smiling, looking slightly to my left left, but at the camera, something like that. You want to give as much detail as you can so that the person that has come to your site and is trying to learn more about you is going to know exactly what's on that graphic. And they're going to know what you look like based on that description. So as many details as you can possibly give is great. The next is the title of your image. When you title your image, include your keyword or key phrase for the post or the page. And here's a hint. If you use Canva to create your graphics or your images for your website, you can title them in Canva. And when you title the image or graphic in Canva, the title is already present when you upload the image to your website. It also makes it easier to find them when you download them to your computer and you have that huge list of downloadable files. It makes it easier to find them that way as well when you go to upload them into your website. Next is the caption. You do not need to include a caption for SEO purposes. It's an optional feature, but note that if you do include a caption, I would recommend including your keyword or key phrase because it can't help hurt and it, who knows it may help, but it will be featured under the photo or graphic when you add it to your page. So it's just think of that as, you know, anytime you see a photo with um, text underneath of it, that's, it's a caption. I think that option is on LinkedIn as well. When you upload a photo into an article, you can add the caption or give credit to the photo. So for example, the caption might become handy if say you had a photographer that you worked with professionally, took a great branding photo of you. Uh, You could add that caption photographed by so-and-so photographer. 
to give them photo credit right then and there if the photo is not watermarked. Um, the next thing is your description. The description is similar to the alt text, but doesn't need to be as specific or have as many specific details. You know that I'm all about simplification and saving time. With that said, I copy the first part of my alt text explaining what the post or page is about, and I paste it into the description. In addition, I always include my name so that when people find the image or graphic online, they know it belongs to me. I'm sure you've experienced it when you type in someone's name in Google and then all of these images come up. It's really important that your name is there when those images come up because first of all, that shows them who you are. But second of all, if it is an image that is related to a keyword or key phrase that maybe doesn't have your photo in it, it does explain that you were the one that uploaded this image to a website and they can click on that and be taken to the blog post about that specific content or that that image is related to. The URL will automatically be assigned based on the URL you have established for the page or the post. So for example, if you if I used the robingram.com forward slash about me, then that would be in the URL for this specific image. And that would be maybe for my about page. Now I don't use that slug about me. I have something more specific um, that is going to be more SEO powerful for my URL and my about page, but that's a whole nother topic. And we can, you can send me a note and ask me questions about that, or you can go to the resource page at, of the website, the robingram.com forward slash resource, which I will link in the show notes as well. And you can download the video on intro to SEO for entrepreneurs, where I explain a lot more of the, the URL and the slugs and all that kind of stuff. But you can also customize the URL. However, I don't recommend it because you want to be found with the page or post um, you have added the image to, and you don't want to alter or confuse or cause an error for a URL. So, and that's just like the principle of overall website health. So I would just leave it as what it's assigned by your website platform. All right, let's talk about the size of images because it does matter. Speed is very important, a very important factor for the overall health of your site. Therefore, you don't want to have large photos that will slow the functionality or the loading of your site. Your images should be no more than 800 pixels on the largest side. In fact, I often use, like if I'm using a square image, I will do 600 by 600 pixels so that it's small enough, it loads fast, but it still has the enough resolution that you can see what the image is. If you don't have a program on your computer to size images, don't worry, you have options. There are plugins that you can add to your website in the back end that will compress your photos for you. Um, you can also use Canva to resize your images. And when you download images from Canva, you can choose the JPEG format, which is what I recommend because it's just faster to load, it's easier, um, and you still have the good quality, but you don't need to have a PNG uploaded to your website. You can use the JPEG format and then size it using the image size slider in Canva. It's so simple, very easy to do. The one thing I want to emphasize is that um, videos can also improve your SEO strategy and the same principles apply. When you upload a video to your website, use these same attributes, fill them in and make sure that your keywords or key phrases are there so that Google recognizes what this topic or video is going to be about. The one thing I want to encourage you to do though is you don't want video to slow your site down. So you can do like a slow load on your um, website, but what's an even better idea is to house your video somewhere else and just put the embed code on your website. And then when people click on the video, it will load for them to watch it. 
but it's not taking up that immense amount of space and slowing down your site. All right. That concludes the information for today. Short, sweet episode. SEO does not have to be complicated. I just want to encourage you to embrace that fact. It can be simplified and you can start your SEO strategy using images and photos so that you just have a higher likelihood of getting found on Google, especially if you want to grow your business without relying on social media. And if you want to grow your business without an emphasis on social media, I encourage you to check out the Success Without Social Mastermind Business Growth Program. It is going to be the best place to start. You can learn more about that by going to www.successwithoutsocialmastermind.com. We do have an application process, but the application process is simply because I have your best interest at heart and I want to make sure that everybody that joins and is accepted into the program is going to be like-minded and we're all going to be able to work together, support each other and grow. And as I mentioned before, the link to that free video is in the show notes as well. But in case you don't want to have to click and you just want to go straight there, you can go to therobbergraham.com forward slash resources. Thank you all for being here today. If you know anyone who might find this information helpful, please share it with them. That would be great. And it will give them an opportunity to start implementing an SEO strategy with simplicity, ease and grace as well. And if you would be so kind to leave a rating and review, that's how I'm able to get such incredible guests as well as help and support more people through this free resource of the Robin Graham show. And collectively, when you leave a rating and review, that helps create that ripple effect of good in the world and helps more people transition their life and business and the world at the same time. All right, friends, thanks so much for being here and I will see you Friday for the next Friday Faith Foundation episode. Have a great week. Introducing Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom Conversations on The Robin Graham Show. Hey friend, we're doing something new and I'm thrilled to share it with you. How would you like to be featured on a top 1% globally ranked podcast and ask a burning question about growing your business? This is your time to shine and to tell my community how you get wins for your clients and to pick my brain, so to speak. I'll answer your question and you and your business get a major shout out. It's a win-win. You've got nothing to lose. To take advantage of this unique, rewarding, and limited time opportunity, go to bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash thinking it through to apply today. The link is in the show notes. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time, so I truly appreciate you joining me. If you enjoyed this episode and found the information helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a rating and review. Ratings and reviews are how we grow and get amazing guests and how more people find the show. A kind review would mean the world to me. Oh, and don't forget to share the episode with someone that it will help. And let's connect. You can find me on Pinterest and LinkedIn as therobingram.com. And be sure and visit the website, therobingram.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success. Until next time, remember to smile.